Hello guys, today we'll be covering a 2016 drama thriller film called Hackers. All relevant links and information for the film will be in the pinned comment below, so let's get into it. The movie begins when the main character Alex introduces his family. They move out of Ukraine to live a new life in Canada. He says that they've been having financial instability their whole life. Currently, Alex lives with his parents. His mum works as a bookkeeper assistant in a bank that also owns the mortgage to their house. Having few friends to spend time with, he gets along well with his computer and becomes enthusiastic about coding. As he grows older, he works as a clicker giving clicks to a website and saving his earnings for education. Alex then becomes more interested in the internet world. It has all the information he wants to learn. The financial crisis, the banks, the vulnerable security of the system, and the need for change. One night, Alex overhears the arguments of his parents, who are both stressed due to their economic circumstances, and he quietly slips outside to buy coffee. The TV at the cafe shows news of a cyber assault organized by Dark Web, an online criminal organization led by a hacker named Zed. Later that night, Alex returns home, and he finds his mother weeping because she was dismissed from the bank. And because they didn't have a steady source of income, their house is also about to be taken by the bank. Alex instantly discloses all the money he's been saving for college and gives it all to his mother so that they don't lose their home here. At first, his mom is skeptical about how her son got all the money. She also does not want to accept it when she learns it's supposed to be for Alex's college. Still, Alex insists that she should accept it because what matters the most right now is not to lose their house. Alex is pissed at the bank that fired his mom. Because of them, he loses all the money that he saved for years. Thinking about earning back the credits, he searches on the internet on how to gain money fast, but almost everything is a scam. Suddenly, he remembers the criminal organization, Dark Web, that he saw on the TV at the cafe and looks up. He wants to join the organization, but first, he must pass the test. One of the members of the organization says that he must be invited or do a criminal act first for him to be validated as a rookie. Alex thinks of someone that he should victimize. He thinks of Randy, the bully in their school that's crazy about protein supplements. To be able to scam him, Alex creates a fake website that sells cheap supplements and Randy falls for it. He uses his father's credit card and Alex gets all the information. He gives this information to the dark web and he passes the test. In the next scene, one of the members, Roosevelt, helps Alex make more money. His first job is in black market trading. Roosevelt will send him things and he must sell them to get his cut. Alex enjoys this business and everything is going well. In just four weeks, Alex earns about $30,000. He pays for his college, bids goodbye to his parents, and moves to Toronto. College begins in January, so he still needs more money to fulfill his living expenses. To sustain his money, he continues his business on the black market to earn more. One day, he steals an expensive watch on the black market. Unlike before, he can't risk selling it on Craigslist because there's so many cops and scammers. To test his luck, he goes to Chinatown to sell the watch. However, no jewelry shops are accepting it. Some are even suspicious that it's stolen. Later, a man wearing dark sunglasses notices Alex. The stranger offers him that if he could sell the watches for more than $30,000, he'd get a 30% cut. Alex agrees and gives him the watch. Interestingly, the stranger is successful and gives him the money afterward. Alex becomes curious about how he successfully sold it, but the person says that he'll only tell him if Alex tells him how he got the watches. The stranger then introduces himself as Sai, and he goes on to tell him the secret of how to sell items successfully. They become partners in crime, earning so much money in a very short time. While going to university, he realizes that college is not the life he wants to live. He decides to continue his business with Sai, stealing jewelry and hacking credit cards. The following day, one of Sai's friends from the club gives them a credit card from a foreign customer. She says it's a gift. Alex notices that this credit card has a lot of money. They make a fake ID and successfully withdraw from the bank without getting caught. One day, while browsing the dark web, Alex finds that the bank that fired his mother is now on the vulnerable list. He wants to get revenge and attack them. However, he fails. As soon as he got into the bank to infiltrate their data, the security had a close look at him putting a parasite on the computer. Before escaping, the security guards came to Alex to bring him to the head of security to interrogate him. The security threatens to call the police on him if he doesn't say where he got the software. Alex explains that the security in their bank is very weak and he negotiates that if he updates the software for free, the security will not report him to the police. Because of this, Alex becomes famous on the dark web. Even the creator, Zed, commends him. Because of his popularity, his friend Sai matches him with a girl for him to date. 
Her name is Kira, and she knows everything about the dark web. Sai wants to make her part of the team. Interestingly, Kira has more knowledge of the dark web than them. She knows how to create fake credit cards, use Bitcoin, and use onion browsing. These are the things that Alex and Sai have never known before. Kira also has many customers. She can easily sell their items with ease. She reveals that her uncle is helping her find clients and she gives him a cut. However, Sai starts to have doubts about Kira. He says that it's suspicious for a girl to have so many connections, especially if she's keeping it a secret. Sai thinks that if she's so good already, why did she need to work with them in the first place? Alex thinks Sai is overthinking it. One day, Kira asks Alex if he wants to go with her to Hong Kong because there's so many more opportunities there for their business. While lying down, Sai accidentally overhears this conversation and he becomes much more suspicious of Kira. Next, it's time for the biggest deal yet for the team. Kira easily found buyers that were willing to buy out all of their items in the truck. Before finalizing the deal, Sai steps in and talks to the clients. He says that he wants to build trust, saying that it would be okay if they don't want to buy all the items. Sai wants them to be loyal buyers in the future. Kira disapproves of this and says that the buyer should buy all of it or it would be no deal. Kira and Sai have a heated argument and Sai has been saying to her all the things he's suspicious about. Amidst this disagreement, Alex goes to the head client and touches him. The client does not like this and takes out his gun and fires it into the air to warn them. He says that the deal is officially off the table and if they try to have a deal with other people they know, he assures him that it would lead to chaos. The following night, they notice that a cop is inspecting their truck. Luckily, he goes away without noticing anything. Alex thinks that they're not safe anymore in the city and proposes that they move for their safety. Sai says that he wants to go to Hong Kong. Since Kira and Alex have already talked about it, the plan easily gets approved. In the next scene, we see Hong Kong become their new home. Alex hopes that their business will calm down a bit upon coming to the city. They continue their business, selling and buying jewelry, computers, gadgets, and other things. They're making a lot of money, but Alex feels that they're not moving on quite fine. Aside from making money, Alex also wants to challenge the system. He's getting bored of all the same business that they're doing. One day, Sai comes home with a lot of money. He brings it to prove that he still has the skills to buy and sell stuff. When he reveals what credit card he used, Alex becomes furious because he specifically told Sai not to use that card. Alex says that Sai is becoming a threat to their security and he wants him out of the team. Sai agrees and leaves the house peacefully. He says that their team used to be fun once and now it's all chaos. To catch the attention of the head of the dark web, Kira suggests that they should attack all the ATMs in Hong Kong. Upon doing it, they can steal about $2 million worth of cash. After hacking the ATMs, they leave a piece of paper with a print of the logo of the dark web. The government officials notice this and say that they'll do everything to catch the criminals. Their plan is successful, although one night, Kira says that she does not want to be part of the team again. She says the reason why she wants to quit is that she wants to rest for a while. Alex thinks this is ridiculous. While arguing with Kira, he notices that Zed promoted him to an underboss on the dark web and commends him for what he's done. Alex then demands to meet Zed. At first, Zed was not convinced until Alex says that it could involve billions of dollars. Zed agrees. Next, we see Alex meeting with Zed in some big warehouse. It's very secluded and secure. Zed is sitting in a wheelchair. He says that if they're willing to cooperate, they should not make any mistakes because he'll kill them and all their families and friends if they do. Later that day, after the meeting, Sai receives a voicemail on Alex's phone and apologizes for the trouble he caused. He says that he wants to have a second chance again to be part of the team. He informs them that he's at a hotel waiting for Alex and Kira. However, some unknown strangers forcefully raid their house and Sai is in danger. When Alex and Kira get home, they find Sai in the bathtub, dead and lifeless. They realize that this is the doing of the Colombian man that they've been stealing money from. If it wasn't for Sai, Alex and Kira would be the dead ones. After the death of their friend, Alex still chooses to continue the job with Zed. Alex now has a team and they're attacking the market system. Their first move is to impersonate and fakely kill the Federal Reserve Chairman. Later that day, Alex's team successfully executes their plan. After that, the team immediately spreads articles in the media stating the Federal Chair was shot. All the wealthy men panic as the market started to go down. All the money that the team stole is divided between Alex and the whole dark web. That same day, after the successful execution of the plan, unknown agents catch Alex and Kira. The agents bring Alex to an unoccupied building. Before letting him free, they destroy his laptops and other gadgets. Alex does not know who these people are and why they attacked him. Also, Alex looks around for Kira but finds her missing. To look for Kira, 
Alex flies to Thailand to meet her in the place they promised. Days have passed and Alex is still unable to find Kira. He feels alone. One day, he decides to go to the internet cafe to go online. He uses one of his fake credit cards as a mode of payment. He learns on the internet that the state agents have defeated the dark web. Zed was captured and state agents killed Kira. The staff from the internet cafe calls the police to report him for using a fake credit card. Later, we see Alex imprisoned for two years. In his days spent in the prison cell, he thinks about getting his simple life back together. In the final scene of the movie, after spending two years in jail, Alex is finally freed through the royal pardon. On the day of his release, at the gates of the prison, he's met by Kira. Alex asks why she's there. Kira finally explains the whole story, revealing that she's been part of a deal she made with the FBI working as an agent to catch Zed. In the end, they both drive off together.